10 African Countries with the Best Infrastructural Development The Foundation for Human Progress, the Eradication of Poverty, and the Achievement of the Sustainable Progress Goals SDGs, across the continent is the provision of enough and suitable infrastructure. The state of the roads reflects how different areas and places are developing. Poor roads would have a major impact on people's ability to access key services like transportation for agricultural goods and medical care. As a result, it is important to understand that proper infrastructure, particularly roads, is vital for rapid growth. More than half of the improvements in socioeconomic growth seen over the previous few years have been attributed to investments made in infrastructure across the continent. In this context, infrastructure may include, but is not limited to, roads, rail networks, power, ICT, water, health, and education infrastructure. While the majority of the continent's nations are currently working to improve its infrastructure, several stand out as remarkable in their delivery of these fundamental infrastructures that make life meaningful for everyone. In today's video, we will be looking at 10 African countries with the best infrastructural development. Stay connected as we make this discovery. 10. Tunisia Formerly known as the Republic of Tunisia, Tunisia is the most northern nation in Africa. The nation shares borders with Algeria to the west and southwest, Libya to the southeast, and the Mediterranean Sea to the north and east form part of the Maghreb region of North Africa. The main traffic and transport routes are in good condition, but do not reach the level of the leading industrial nations. Tunisia ranks 74th in the world in terms of the length of its rail network, with 0.14 meters per inhabitant. Freight traffic on the rails most recently totaled 413.30 miles. 9. Gabon The principal modes of transportation compare Gabon's infrastructure to the standard across all of Africa. Despite being in good shape, the major transportation routes do not match those of the most advanced industrialized countries. With 0.35 meters per resident, Gabon's rail network is the 46th longest in the world. The length of the rail system as a whole is 810 kilometers. Most recently, 409.00 million tons and kilometers of freight were transported on trains. In 2020, there were 87 million passenger kilometers traveled. The mentioned waterways are interior rivers and canals used for transportation. The 885 kilometers of coastline that make up the number of ports. 180,000 freight containers were moved in 2020. 8. Zambia Zambia's infrastructure needs are still a significant barrier to growth, economic diversification, and human development. The Link Zambia 8000 project will build more interprovincial and interdistrict roads to open up the nation. Other areas for development in this sector include investments in health, education, water, and sanitation, increased power generation capacity through the upgrading and building of new generation facilities and use of alternative energy sources, the rail network being improved and expanded to lessen the burden on road infrastructure. In order to address the estimated 1.5 million housing unit shortage in Zambia, 110,000 new homes will need to be built per year for the next 10 years. The Zambian government will undoubtedly face short to medium-term financial constraints as it begins fiscal reforms and renegotiates existing loans with commercial creditors, despite the ongoing need for new infrastructure investment. 7. Mauritius In Mauritius, the infrastructure is well-developed. A total of 1,910 kilometers 1,186 miles of roads are in very good condition, with 1,834 kilometers, 1,139 miles of these being paved. The road network can support the amount of traffic in the country as of the year 2000. Fewer than 10% of people are car owners. Several road projects, including the expansion of the route from Nouvelle France to Plain Magnine, the implementation of the Southeastern Highway Project and the building of bypasses in places like Flax, Goodlands, and Triolet have been proposed in the interim. Mauritius doesn't have any railroads, although bus transportation is dependable and effective. In the late 1990s, Port Louis Harbor received additional capacity 
and was reconfigured to accommodate heavy traffic and cargo volume. The nation has a successful free port that manages roughly our 9 billion worth of trade annually. This is thought to be about 13,000 tons in volume. Given its location between Africa, Asia, and Australia, Mauritius hopes to establish itself as a significant transshipment hub. Currently, there are five airports, two of which have paved runways. British Airways, Air France, South African Airways, and Air Mauritius are the principal carriers for flights to and from Mauritius. 6. Egypt Egypt's building industry has long been regarded as the safest place for Egyptians to invest their wealth. Over the past 10 years, the sector has seen a tremendous increase in activity. Additionally, after a brief halt caused by the COVID-19 outbreak, the sector is expected to rise by 9% on average between 2020 and 2024. Active public-private partnerships, the proliferation of green buildings, and the need for high-end infrastructure will be the key drivers of this growth. For the majority of Egyptians, investing in real estate has long been seen as a safe haven due to its consistent value growth. The Egyptian government has made significant investments in the building industry. The government of Egypt's construction of a sizable new administrative capital 30 miles east of Cairo is a well-known example. The government was anticipated to move by the end of 2022 after finishing the first phase of the project, which involved all cabinet ministries and bodies. Additionally, the government is modernizing the transportation systems, ports, and airports. The Ministry of Transportation is currently working on about 25 projects related to the railroad industry. The government's major objective is to expand the roads and ports for industrial development while also connecting the cities with reliable transportation systems. 5. Nigeria Despite the fact that unstable power supplies have slowed growth, infrastructure has made a net contribution of about one percentage point to Nigeria's improved per capita growth performance in recent years. Growing the nation's infrastructure endowment to the level of the middle-income nations in the region may increase yearly growth by about 4%. Nigeria's power, road, rail, and ICT networks are among the most developed in Africa, and they cover a large portion of the country. The power, ports, ICT, and domestic air transport industries are all undergoing extensive reforms. But problems still exist. The operational efficiency and cost recovery of the power sector in Africa have been among the lowest, supplying just about half of what is needed and resulting in social expenses of roughly 3.7% of GDP. With low and declining levels of piped water coverage, the water and sanitation industry operates inefficiently. Additionally, irrigation development is lacking in comparison to the nation's enormous potential. Nigeria's road networks are in bad shape due to a lack of maintenance, and the nation has a dismal track record for air transport safety. Over the next 10 years, consistent spending of about $14.2 billion per year, or around 12% of GDP, will be needed to address Nigeria's infrastructure problems. Nigeria has spent $5.9 billion so far. Given the resilience of the national economy, substantial oil revenues, attempts to recoup the cost of electricity, and other operational and management enhancements, it is in a good position to raise the money required for infrastructure. 4. Morocco Moroccan infrastructure spending has increased significantly during the past 20 years. Between 2001 and 2017, the macroeconomic level saw total investments that ranged from 25 to 38 percent of global GDP, one of the highest rates ever recorded. More than half of this investment, which went toward infrastructure, was made by the public sector, local governments, public businesses, and the Treasury. In terms of GDP, Morocco is among the nations that get the most government development aid, of which 50 percent is allocated to infrastructure. The investments have enhanced access to markets and essential services, boosted productivity, and built more dependable supply chains. 3. Botswana The net contribution of infrastructure to Botswana's improved per capita growth performance in recent years was little over 2 percentage points. The annual growth rate might be increased by around 1.2 percentage points by bringing the nation's infrastructure endowment up to par 
with that of the middle-income nations in the region. In recent years, Botswana has made substantial infrastructure advancements throughout the fields of transportation, water and sanitation, power and mobile communications. But there are still some significant infrastructure issues that the nation must address. The most urgent is in the power sector, where the nation is exposed economically and financially due to a lack of generation capacity and an inadequate supply of power leaving the economy susceptible to shocks in the price of energy and load shedding. 2. Kana During the 2000s, infrastructure added little over 1% to Ghana's yearly per capita GDP growth. The annual growth rate might increase by more than 2.7 percentage points if the nation's infrastructure were to be on par with that of the middle-income nations in the region. When compared to other low-income African nations, Ghana possesses a sophisticated infrastructure base. Impressive levels of coverage for rural water, power, and GSM signals exist across the nation. The majority of the road network is in decent to good condition. ICT, ports, transportation, and water supply industries have all embraced institutional reforms. The most pressing issues facing Ghana are in the area of power where the country is dependent on expensive oil-based generating due to outdated transmission and distribution systems, rapid demand growth, and recurring hydrological shocks. Customers are subjected to sporadic supply as a result of exceptionally high losses in water distribution. Increasing annual spending to $2.3 billion will be necessary to address Ghana's infrastructure problems. The nation already invests over $1.2 billion annually in infrastructure, or 7.5% of GDP. Each year, inefficiencies cost the economy an additional $1.1 billion, primarily because power is underpriced. Ghana has a financing need for infrastructure of roughly $0.4 billion annually, primarily in the areas of power and water. As a result of its recent oil discoveries, Ghana can improve public spending via increasing tax revenues. The nation has a strong economic foundation on which to grow, as well as a number of promising regions on which to build. 1. South Africa In order to guarantee rapid economic growth and reduce poverty in South Africa, infrastructure development is essential. A good core infrastructure network exists in South Africa, including a transportation system, electricity grid, communication system, sewage system, and water supply. Despite having a strong core network, rural and historically underdeveloped areas lack the same level of infrastructure as developed areas because of significant levels of socioeconomic inequality. Both the residents of these areas and South Africa's economic progress are impacted by the fundamental differences between these communities. One method of describing various infrastructure types is to divide them into two categories, hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. Hard infrastructure refers to the physical networks required for a contemporary industry to operate. Roads, bridges, and railroads are included in this. The institutions that uphold a nation's economic, social, environmental, and cultural norms collectively are referred to as soft infrastructure. This covers instructional initiatives, governmental data, amusement parks, police enforcement organizations, and emergency services. Do well to share your thoughts on what you think about infrastructure in Africa, and do not hesitate to like, share, and subscribe to Africa Reloaded for more exciting adventures.